yes, Halo, man. I mean, right. they. I've seen the trailer. I've seen clips of the first episode. It's absolutely, it's awful what they're doing. It's absolutely yeah. awful. Yeah, I want to go through a couple pieces because I'm, a, and I said in my little analysis of the first episode, I know a lot of people actually have not actually seen a whole lot. They have done mostly, uh, like you said, like just seeing the trailer and whatever. Let me tell you what. I'm a total normie. Like my, mm. I know, I know more of Halo through my sons. They were at, you know, at really actively, you know, Halo one, two, three, the pop culture phenomenon that was master chief. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you as a normie, the first time I watched the episode and everybody was, I, I saw some different videos and a couple of articles to kind of make sure I didn't make a fool of myself trying to put together a video. I didn't really get and pick up on who everybody was like, who's the covenant. These are elites the planets, motivations. The, the episode is so poorly written mm. that that's not clear for a normie. So I'm like, I'm not sure even what the target audience is. If we're ticking off the fans by brutally throwing this nonsense together, and then you can't speak to someone like me who's actually trying to follow along. Now, the second time I watched it, I kind of, you know, it, it's almost like cheating because I can't separate what I learned from my first impression because I now know these are called elites. So I pick up on all the little dialogue uh mentions that i didn't catch the first time so we probably should wait for loki to let it play a little bit but so first talk to me a little bit about your halo are you a diehard halo fan well i only know bits and pieces of pieces about halo i i was okay. more of a playstation player than an xbox player okay but, but from what i know this current tv series is really it just goes against it completely mm -hmm. i mean you've got this you've got master chief who, who, in my view, is going to be a side character in his own story, like with many heroes of many franchi franchises that have gone before. They're going to use him as basically a, a show, a front man, and then they're going to fill everything in behind him that is full of their agenda. So I don't know much about uh, Halo, but I can tell you from past experience, they're going to use yet another franchise to latch on their agenda yeah and that's kind of what we were talking about whenever we were leading into this we were kind of talking about some of the other stuff so let me bring stone loki in here my hey buddy I, so am good to have you with us. I am so sorry dude i hate time zones i absolutely freaking hate time zones i had all of this this tonight tetris in because heiress of chaos is having her birthday stream at six i thought your stream didn't start till 6 30 so i was like okay i can tetris everything in i've got a stream coming up with clobby at at 8 30 all of this will work out great and your stream started 45 minutes ago i am so sorry man we're good I... man we were just shooting the s about this and that talking about other franchises that are going to hell in a handbag uh just having some fun and uh it's been good ryan's come up in here we're gonna talk about halo i thought i would just kind of i said we can't do efap we'll be here for eight hours we can kind of hit a few of the highlights of the show because <laughs> my first impression and um Ryan and I were talking about it briefly. So mm. again, I'm a total normie, um, living vicariously through my children. Um, I knew more about like I know more about the production history of this, you know, Spielberg's Amblin buying the rights to it some ten plus years ago because I was writing for a pop culture website at the time. So I knew about the long storied history of them not making this, and yep. I actually kind of joked in my review that. I bet every script that was turned in sounded like a bad knockoff of like Starship Troopers or some actually good sci-fi and never got made. And now they, they just basically Paramount is basically copying, in my opinion, Paramount, like others were going to do. They're doing nothing more than following the Disney Marvel, Disney Star yep. Wars, Disney Plus model of content. Because the rumors are this is not only picked up for season two, but there's actually already under contract for season three. Now, I'm not sure that's basically legit. Loki, do you know that for sure? I don't know. I've that's seen the that rumor. More than, yeah, that I've is the that more than rumor. one place, though. Yeah, that is the rumor right now that it, that it's already been that season two's already greenlit, and they're already driving into doing a season three. That is the big rumor right now. Absolutely. So it starts out uh, with basically sand. So you know, right after sitting through two or three seasons of Disney <laughs> Star Wars, when I first played this, and I thought, yeah. oh, great. I'm getting more and more sand. Thank more you. More Tatooine. Everything's set in Tatooine. Deserts. I know. We have, 
and it's like oh and the other thing that really bothers me is we're 500 years and this is going to come up several times it's 500 years in the future and we have mm -hmm. crappy guns crappy tv cra it's just like has anything happened in 500 years that would remotely <laughs> advance it? I feel like this is like the 1980s sci-fi. This is yeah. like really so badly done. So this is how we set everything up. It's obviously a little small little colony. Again, I have no frame of reference. We don't get a whole lot to go on before we cut to the cliche old guy in the bar who's just talking about, you know, the elites and how tough they are. This is some sort of like anti-war peace treaty propaganda on this, again, you mean, crappy you TV mean the in the Spartans. background. The Spartans. Oh, how oh, tough right. the Sorry. Spartans are. Right. Ooh. The Spartans are so tough. They're invincible. You don't know what you're talking about. They're worth 150 Marines. Now, my first question, and Loki, hopefully you'll know more, uh, is the game this diverse? I, we have some 500-year <laughs> future. It's in the middle of nowhere, sand planet. We have like black girl, Asian guy, and then this is basically like Quint from Jaws, like, you don't know scars. The Indianapolis went down with the sharks and the Spartans showed up. And it's like, what? It's just some cliched rant from the old guy. And then well, see, the they're not even supposed to really know about the Spartans. Right. Um, okay. So as far as the UNSC goes, yes, there was this, there was this, um, this revolution of sorts in the outer colonies, the outer colonies are like, well, we want to rule ourselves. We don't want you to, we don't want to be ruled by the UNSC. We don't want to be ruled by earth. We want to decide our own destiny. Now in reach in the game reach, they're all speaking Russian. Isn't that, okay. isn't that that's, interesting? That's, they're all that's, speaking that's, Russian, yeah. especially in today's age. That's not and the, one, a little weird. One of the Spartans has to translate. George has to translate what the colonists are saying on reach because they the other spartans don't know the language gotcha gotcha okay all right uh their leader comes in and he is uh he's asian as well so we've got the young guy young guy this is asian daughter uh she's a rebel she's there's there's asian general and then his daughter sneaks off because that's what uh you know, people of leadership's children do in Hollywood is they sneak off for drugs. They're going to find these little drugs. <laughs> well, they do because that's what my kids always did. They snuck off to the woods not to look at critters or try to find something to eat on this desolate planet. They were trying to look for drugs. And she stumbles across. Basically, there she is. She's a star of the show because, Ryan, you're absolutely right. She's the oh. star of the show right there. She's, yep. baby Yoda. She's baby Yoda. She's baby Yoda. She's all the action figures that will be on the clearance aisle at your Ollie's. Or at Ollie's really, really soon. Uh, she sees basically aliens, and um, you sort of like it's a cliche, like you know, it's not going to be what everybody thinks it is. She sends up a red flare, and then basically they get attacked. Subverting expectations. There was not one ounce of subversion. I was calling these shots every second of the way as I was watching this. Like I knew exactly what was going to happen. Um, but I will say this, and again, First off, before I get to the action sequence, Stone Loki is it, it Loki? Is there any of this mythos in the Halo series? Is this just a commentary for them to have a story? I just didn't know the difference between what's in the game and that the actual story of the game and what they've basically. Is this is all fiction. They've all created. Okay, I'm going to call fiction meaning they've made it up, not yeah. a, in general. It's again, it's they've cherry picked. Um, okay. The producers of this show and the showrunners specifically have said before this, we ever saw episode one, they said, we've taken characters, places, and content from the story and created our own story, which means this is, this is fan fiction. Mm -hmm. This is total, okay. complete fan fiction. They don't care what happened in the games. They've said, we don't care what happened in the games. We don't care about the story in the games. All we've done is we've taken the characters and some places and some ideas. There are books that detail how the entire war started and they're just they're just going to none of that ever happened we've got our own thing and we're going our own way ryan when you heard all of that does that even remotely pique your interest as something that you want to watch a fan fiction version of halo put together for paramount plus absolutely not absolutely not in in my view what they're doing with halo is exactly what Disney did with Star Wars. They took away the existing expanded universe and created their own version of the future, 
replacing the the new Jedi Order and the Yuuzhan Vong with what turned out to be the sequel trilogy, which I believe is one of the greatest mistakes a company has made in modern times, certainly for entertainment. And we're seeing the same thing here. It's just clearly fan fiction. It's going to flop, just like everything these woke people do nowadays in the entertainment industry. They latch on to existing franchises, parasite off them, bleed them dry, and use it as a platform for their uh, agendas and ideologies. I, I was... I was brought back to how i felt when i watched the new star trek trilogy and i remember watching the first one and i kept thinking i have like an itch that won't go away because i don't like it but i couldn't really get exactly what i didn't like other than i knew that it just wasn't going to make any sense then they murdered it for me with Khan and benedict cumberbatch and and, and, I'll, and i'll never forgive jj abrams for that because he was basically asked point blank if cumberbatch was Khan. And I thought to myself, in hindsight, why you why would you lie to us like that? Like it didn't make sense. It would have made more sense if you just be honest. Instead, you just it was one lie after another, and they basically created an alternate universe that didn't make any sense whatsoever. And I hated would, it so much. Would that have would would if if they had gotten Antonio Banderas to play I am Khan? Yeah. Would yeah. would that have been better? Because I I man I, I I thought about that when I heard that I was like. Holy shit, Antonio, but I am Khan. Yeah. Look at me. I, I'm suave and the aristocrat and, and I am I'm powerful. He could have played it beautifully. It would have been and awesome. They got and I will say the that this is a pet peeve I have across pop culture. We could do a whole stream just on this. What is with the addiction for them wasting so much money on expensive talent that they don't even use or they use CGI as the character or they're behind a helmet? For instance... Well, who cares who the lead actor is in Mandalorian because they're behind a freaking helmet? I told well, he's not even today, he's not even in that suit a lot. I know of the time. it's a stunt person. It's like why did you even bother? I, I asked a friend of mine today, you know, huge Star Wars fan like myself. I says, okay, listen, I've met him and I know you've met him. Could you pick David Prowse out of a lineup? And again, David Prowse when he filmed the movie, not now when I've met him or a few years ago when I met him, he was older. I, you know, when he's young. I probably wouldn't be able to pick him out of a lineup. Chewbacca, Peter Mayhew, I could have picked out of a lineup because he's an odd-looking individual. But could you pick out Jeremy Bullock? He's like, he, he kind of hesitated. I'm like, it's Boba Fett. And he's like, absolutely not. I says, because we don't care. They become – so why do they pay expensive actors and whatever? It's just for stupid name recognition. It doesn't even make sense. It's just everything – Ryan, you hit the nail on the head because everything has been like stirred up, shaken – disoriented there's no one cares about anything anymore is how i feel well i personally think that all this money that is going in say for example star trek discovery the amount of money that's gone into that show i think it's a money laundering scheme <laughs> to, you know to put bit. money into this show to hide the fact that they're spending it somewhere else because you've got all this money being poured into these shows but the content that's being created is very poor. I mean, with the three of us, our budgets are minimal, I believe, and we managed to create decent content. I mostly do videos. Loki mostly does live streams, and I believe you, uh, Pops, do a mixture of both, if I'm if I'm not wrong in yep. that regard. Yep. Yeah, but Ryan, you're forgetting they have to feed Tilly. <laughs> dun dun dun. Sorry, sorry for anybody out there. That, yeah, yeah, my bad. Dun dun dun. You're you're good. You're good. You're good. All right, so this. So let's go back to our uh, our riveting show here because now we actually get an action sequence. So uh, here they show up. So let's. We might actually play just a little bit. There's a lot uh, of pew pew in this too. A lot of pew pew pew, and that that is one thing. I love the, I love the intensity right there. Wait, we should have our scene. This should be a meme. Why is this not a meme? I'm not good at making memes. I need one of these people that are. I bear with my service. My dad is. I I stay with my dad during the week when I'm at my day job. So he's probably in there streaming some show off my Voodoo account that's in HD X or something. So it's chewed up my bandwidth. But uh, yeah, that shot. This should just be some sort of crazy overlays with this nonsense. Anyway, so the fight breaks out. Here's our expensive CGI critters Oof. attacking, which I've learned that are called the elite. And, and they, those don't even look like elites. 
honestly, they put the that's, armor. That's what I've heard. But they look more like the the apes. They look more like the the brutes. They don't. Those do not look like elites. Those look like brutes. And brutes so are like these big Halo, ape-like aliens. So if I Google Halo and brutes, I would see something that looks a lot more like that compared to these things. Yeah, they've got the lower jaw right, but the elites are not like huge bulking figures. Mm. They are like okay, the elites are like the Navy SEALs of the Covenant. They are they are the best of the best. They're 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 invisible. They're quiet. They they run up and they kill you and then laugh at you. Oh, woman! Ha 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 ha! And and that's it. The ape, the brutes, the brutes are big, hulking, massive monsters that act like this. Not elites. Hmm. Man, they don't even care about like the secondary characters and stuff like that. It's just wow. So. I mentioned Mandalorian. Uh, I have a, I had a comment here about uh, someone point out that uh, John Wayne's grandson uh, actually has a, a role. Okay. That's the, uh, the other Mandalorian is Brendan Wayne. I did not know that. Dave, thank you so much for a little bit of trivia. That's good. I didn't know that part. So uh, these little critters show up. They attack the humans. And I'm sitting there going, all right, well, the Spartans are going to show up at any moment and prove they're not the bad guy. These things are. So that's pretty much what's going to happen. Sorry, spoiler alert, uh, 16 times over with this ridiculousness. Uh, but some of the scenes are not terrible because there's literally like blowing limbs off and shooting people in the head that's vaporizing and all that. But as you can imagine, she's surviving. She just runs around, never getting hit. People are, watch, people are going to get vaporized around her. Uh, this is, again, the worst, the worst strategy uh, ever if there's an attack is everyone hide in the closet which is pretty much what they basically did and then this is the special effect which again some of this I, I didn't find was terrible I don't know what's going on I, I don't really at this point I didn't care that I didn't know too much about what's going on I also just know it's just a matter of time for it to uh, for it to change Um, here's our leader and then he shows up oh, so I, I missed the uh, oh jeez hang again I, I find Paramount Plus just excruciating trying to navigate, by the way, because it's only like a 10 second thing, and it's not always uh, as easy to let's see if we can capture the uh, the money shot, which I'm sure should have been publicized. But oh, I missed it. He basically lands like Iron Man, Ryan, just so you know, there's no cliches no. or anything. He lands exactly <laughs> like Iron Man, you know, the, the, the famous uh, Iron Man pose, which has basically been so overly done. And I, and I really am not allowed to really throw rocks at it as much as I probably am because I actually um, I wrote one novel and I made a joke. And it's actually meant to be like facetious in the character because the feet, the character does an Iron Man thing. But it's almost like a, everything she does is a joke. It's not meant to oh. be as serious. Hmm. Uh, this is uh, such a horrible fight scene um, in some ways. Because, and I don't know what's game... Watch this one shot coming up. Oh, that's the well, yeah. Watch this well, shot right terrible there. Terrible okay. UI. Now notice, ter- terrible, terrible. And when he swings it back around, he uh, you you think he hits it with the gun and he misses. Like it's not. It doesn't actually hit the creature. No. Oh. Watch the one shot when he does a second swing around. I can't. I can never get it caught. Not this one. That guy. Watch this one. He swings around, right there he misses the face he actually the head goes back before the gun hits him in the face it's really terrible <laughs> they can't even <laughs> choreograph cgi and and no i said it's basically the... it's basically like last jedi all over again they can't even Ooh. choreograph the scenes they just cut through it watch real close though you can see stuff's happening the head moves before the head moves before he doesn't actually hit it in the face. It's so cheesy bad. Can you pull but, the HUD back up that picture? Mm. The picture with the HUD? Because this is really, this is what I don't understand. What's the, the HUD? I'm sorry. Oh, where it showed the HUD. The, like you're first seeing from his, view. yeah, first person view. And that first person oh, view yeah, where yeah, you yeah. see the little bar on top of his, of the, of the, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll, the way you can, you can describe it while I try to get to the right spot. This, this, <laughs> this thing is just 
and it jumps. The way they so, say there right go. there. Okay, okay, so right here, you've got his grenade count, you've got his health at the very top, you have his shield levels, you have the radar in the bottom lower hand side of the screen. You yeah. have the ammo count of the gun at the top right. Now, let me ask you a question. If they didn't care about the game, which is what they said, we don't want we don't want anything from mm. the game. We don't really give a crap about that. We just want the characters and we're going to tell our own story. Why the hell do they have a HUD very much like the game HUD where you've got the health, you've got the shield, you've got the you've got the compass, you've got the grenade, you've got all this stuff from the HUD of the actual game, but you don't want to use what's in the game for your show. Right, and it's very much a first-person, a uh, first shooter Ooh. point of view, right? I mean, obviously, right. I can see this as being very similar to what I would expect the game to be like, yet nothing and else is similar. And they're wow. the sounds. They're actual sounds from the game. You hear the beeping of the shield generator telling you hit the right. Master Chief shield's low. They never explain any of that. So if you haven't played the game, you don't know what all that means. Gotcha. Why put that level of service to sounds and uh, it's all member berries Ooh, to yeah, say, berries. look how yep. cool we are. We've got little things from the game in it because we care, but we don't care about the actual history that's in the games. We don't care about the story they told. We don't care about any of that, but we're going to give you some fan service and member berries. That's all it is. It's, uh, it's bait and switch. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're, yep. They got their fishing rod and they put the bait on there and they try to hook you in as it were. So they can also, say we care. I also want to throw in just one of my pet peeves and all of science fiction and, 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 and war movies in particular is this scene um, so the female, she comes in, she strikes him down, and she gets this guy, and then picks the alien gun up, shoots him in the head, and then throws the gun away. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if mm. I'm battling anything, and the weapon is maybe more advanced or at least as efficient as the one I have, I'm not throwing it to the ground. I hate that cliche. It just irritated me to no end. So I had to stop and come back and revisit the episode after about a couple of minutes. Uh, anyway, this nonsense goes on. And of course, uh, let's see, every cliche you can imagine. And Ryan, you can probably predict how this is going to go. She's going to survive. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the dad. Um, she's being she, he's, she's being attacked because it sees her. I'm oh, sorry. There you mm -hmm. go. So and then he dies. He's going to die, right? Yeah, right <laughs> in front of her. No, I I don't understand. And again, I know they don't care about the game, so you kind of have to help me out a little bit, Loki. Um, why is it that it seems like when the Spartans are using their weapons, it's efficient, and when these humans are using this similar weapons, um, they're not. You, nobody does anything. I don't. I don't think we ever see a human kill an elite. Okay, the weapon he's using is like an AK forty-seven. The big rifle, the battle rifle that the Spartan is using, those use 50 caliber rounds, kind of like okay. a handgun. Okay. So that the handgun that they use is firing a 50 caliber round. The assault rifle they're using fires a 50 caliber round. The sniper rifle they use, I believe has an explosive, is like an explosive tip caseless okay. round. None of this so everything's around maximum damage, sure. whereas the guns that these humans have in the colony are like old 21st century weapons, mm -hmm. which they wouldn't even have. They'd have they'd have updated stuff. They would they wouldn't have crapless weapons. And there's mm -hmm. no reason why that chain gun should have been ineffective when he had it compared to when Master Chief has it later. Yeah, that makes no sense. That makes absolutely no sense. Um, and again. Uh, for the normie in me, I've heard a lot of people talking about their, I'm going to call it battle armor, for lack of a better term. There's like a versions two, three, four, five, there's different yes. versions, right? And they, and they didn't even try to pick one, which would have made sense. Like he has, they have one version now in season two, they get another version in season three. They get, no, no, it's like an amalgam of all sorts of just stuff, just all muddled together, correct? Yes, yes. Um, uh, right now, down. the chief is not supposed to have the type six Majolner armor that doesn't happen till halo two in halo one. He's got a type five. He does not have a type six and they specifically say that. And what they've done with the suit is they've mishmashed different, different armor from different eras in the games so that they can have them look just how they want to. That's not Mark six. 
It's just, mm-hmm. it drives me completely nuts that this is just, again, Ryan, you were saying it too. They don't care. And it's just like throw stuff together, mm-hmm. sprinkle some member berries while we just do whatever the heck we want to do. Yep. Uh, not much sort of transpires. Um, she's the only one that survives. They go to investigate the cave very carelessly. Like, obviously, there's one of the elites inside. That's pretty much what happens. They get inside. And then we see here the one escapes. Master Chief finds the artifact. This is the artifact. He touches it. It lights up blue and sends out all this energy. Is any of that in the game? Is that is this is this thing from the game or something they manufactured? That is for well, if if we are correct, then that is forerunner technology, and that is from okay. the game. Not okay. that specific device, but that is that it looks to me like forerunner technology. Yes, okay. and the cool. forerunners was a race of human-like beings that were basically controlled the universe thousands and th- hundreds of thousands of years before any of this happened. Okay. And then what happens is basically we get basically the cliche. Uh, it transpires in this scene. Now that he's done all that. He basically breaks protocol. It's, it's, it was so cliche. You knew exactly what's going to happen. He sends two people to go this way. One person's going to go that way. They say, well, that's not protocol. He's like, it's okay. I got it. It's like, okay, total cliche, horrible story writing, no motivations just because I said so. And then she lives. So he has to take care of her. And this is where we cut to the science. Uh, the woman led um, basically Federation. I don't know what to call these people. What are they? What are they, what are they technically? The USMC? Is that right? U- USNC. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're all run by women. I don't know. Ryan, I mean, you know, so far. She, she's a one. part of ONI. Dr. Halsey is a part of ONI. And ONI is the UNSC branch of like intelligence. Okay. So ONI is like operations, naval intelligence, I believe she is in charge. She created the Spartans. If they hold true to lore, she created the Spartans. Now this other chick, this chick that they stole from Amasarala off of, off of, um, the expanse, Mm. she's never been in any of this before. And in the original, in the games, Halsey is not married to keys, keys and keys and Halsey were like comrades. So this is almost like the senior, senior commander of everything. Cause she's nope, given, shouldn't she's be. given the other lady, she's given the other way. So it is, it is sort of a, so there's at least one line of dialogue that alludes that keys created the Spartans. That's so that, that, that I picked up on. That was very clear who this person is or whatever the hierarchy is. She's basically like a government bureaucratic bully threatening her. Like you may not get your funding. What are you doing? There's this quick shot of clone of a clone. So that's bad. Don't do that. That's basically illegal. Here's the clone. I guess it's the clone of her, right? Is that who's supposed to be in this thing? Or we I'm don't know. I'm guessing for sure. this is some like pre prototype to what Cortana was possibly supposed to be. They don't okay. want her to do whatever she's doing. I think what they're, I think what Halsey, what they're implying here is Halsey wants to create a clone and put Cortana inside of her and then make her a Spartan. And that's not going to okay. work. They're never going to let that happen. Then we cut to the bad guys. That's all I know. I got this person that's basically across from if Snoke were in Dark Crystal, Ryan. What do you think? Is that about right? It looks like Snoke and well, Dark Crystal. Uh, they they met. They met at they met at a bar and they made this thing. I didn't know what it was called. I didn't know what its name was. I did I, on the second viewing. I pick up a little bit of that because at least with the subtitles, they give you some of the dialogue, but not in the actual express dialogue. Well, from my limited perspective. As far as I'm aware, the Covenant is a religious order Mm. and that this fine looking creature right here is uh, (laughs) one of the higher ups in that order. They despise humanity and they want to see its end. They basically, the, the Covenant, take over. The remnants, I believe, of the forerunners. Correct me if I'm wrong, Loki, because no, Halo is not my specialty. You are correct. The prophets, and that is one of the prophets, mm. um, basically rule the covenant, and they tell you what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. They are very SJW in how they operate. Um, if you do not conform to the way they want to do things, they will basically eradicate mm. you. And the one of the very first things they ever did was they. They beat the elites. Now, the elites didn't have any technology. So the elites were like samurai. 
and the elites went in and fought the prophets and the prophets beat them and then said you were so badass we want you as our not only as our personal guard but we want you as our army and the elites said yes we will do that and then the elites helped conquer a whole bunch of other races and bring them into the covenant the prophets would never ever work with a human and or allow a human onto high charity this is this is blasphemy to the prophets they would never ever ever consort or work with a human because they're all heretics this would prevent them from getting to heaven that is what these showrunners do not understand the right. prophets are so zealot like yep. that just talking to a human like this would prevent them from going to heaven. You know, the irony is I saw this. I thought this human before the dialogue got because the, the dialogue is very slow and tedious. And Ryan, I'm saving you from all of this. Just, you know, maybe we should do this weekly so you can get the short version of all this. Um, <laughs> I actually thought she was a slave or something. She was like a translator for the alien creature to understand the humans. And then as she starts speaking, you realize that she's almost like the one in charge calling the shots. You're like, okay, I have no idea what's happening. That and then here's the best happen. part. Here's the it's... best part, Ryan. I'm mm-hmm. going to spoil it for Ryan. The best part, when this mm-hmm. scene is over, you never see these people again. Oh, that's a relief. There's no that we don't get another shot at the prophet and whatever she who is did we have a name I don't even know her now it doesn't matter it doesn't matter she'll show up again because they they're trying to make her relevant um we kind of have to speed along we'll be here all day so we got to fast forward to how because we have to have you know alpha male the lead character has to start empathizing with baby Yoda so it starts with this bizarre sort of transmission like we're going to uh, communicate. Um, with Quan. Quan is the only survivor. So they send this person who's been dramatically changed from the game. Because I looked up some of the outrage yes. of this character dramatically yes. looks different. And this scene is It's so... not just the looks. It's not just the looks, Pops. It's everything. She is not... She is not Halsey's child in the games. They okay. have they have married Capt- Captain Keys and Halsey... And this is their child. Gotcha. Halsey and Keys were never married. They were, they were, they were, they were buddies. He and he was like her chauffeur at the beginning, in the very beginning, when they collected all the kids to make them Spartans. He was her chauffeur, and she had disdain for him. And because they worked together for so long, and she began to appreciate Keys's intelligence and his strategic mind. They became friends. They did not become lovers. They didn't have a child together. This is all horseshit from Paramount. It is terrible. Pardon my language. No, you're fine. We go PG-13, but I'm good. I'm not editing anything out. It, it It is so awkward because basically what happens is she says, we need you to make a video that says the Spartans saved the day. And the great writers over at the creators of this nonsense thought, well, you know what we'll do is We'll make Quan just threaten them because that's a good idea, right? She's just going to threaten them and say, no, I'm not making your stupid video. It won't work anyway. I want my planet to be free because of I, – I want my planet to be free because of daddy. And then basically they're like – they basically just tell her to get some rest. That was basically how the scene ends. And then behind her back, they basically put in a kill order for her to die. They cut forward to Master Chief. This is them analyzing his body because basically they're he's basically being tracked and watched pretty much around the clock and they can see him even though he's like he's Mr. Sad he's Mr. Sad Soldier now because he touched the relic and he has visions, right? Uh oh, did I lose you guys? No, I'm uh, here. Okay. Hello? Does any of this I'm does fine. any of this align to the uh, game at all? Because nope. it, it was so all was over so the map and so awesome. pathetic, I didn't think so. Nope. None of this has anything to do with any of the games or any of the books. Right. Okay. And that whole thing with, with her telling Chief that that what he did to her, that's all bullshit. That is all giant. This That is all feel sorry for me and simp for me because Paramount wants it that way. Yeah, this is terrible. This is the person that's now married to the other person and had the other one's kid. It makes no sense. He just comes and goes on screen. We never care. I, I never cared. Uh, this is hollow. A little bit. It, it's hollow. Hmm. It's not halo. It's hollow. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. Agreed, That's Ryan. Yeah. yeah uh, I'm just really jumping ahead because all this nonsense. So basically, this is where it gets. So all this middle is like 15 minutes of just complete nothing. This is the Mandalorian Baby Yoda bonding scene. Basically, we get her. She starts by asking if he eats and takes his helmet off. And then he basically like, well, she's not a horrible human. And then he gets the little alert that basically they put a kill order in for her because, well, I don't know. She just threatened their entire power structure. So here's the Article 72 term. Is Article 72 a thing? And does it actually mean terminate? Nope. Oh, for the love of freaking Pete. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> they might as well just call this show hollow. On Paramount I Plus. I don't even I, see. I don't understand. So again, as a writer, and I, I've done a fair amount of writing in my days, I thought to myself, you know, if I were adapting a novel, the first thing I'd do is ask for like the transcript of the novel. Just give me the whole thing in like a Word document, and then you just start eliminating things, and you keep trying to keep as much of the original as you can as possible. Halo is not only all these video games and all of that; it has this massive expanded universe. And I didn't know all of this. I've had a crash course in something that. And this is why I feel so sad for this franchise and, and fans of it, because I'm like, they couldn't even try to come up with a terminate code or some sort of death sentence message that he would get. It makes no freaking sense. You were such lazy bastards. Golly, money. Mm. Yeah. Okay, back to the show, because obviously he doesn't kill her. Uh, they talk, talk, talk. They manipulate the oxygen on the ship. He passes out briefly. She's passed out. And then he just wakes himself up. And then they're going to send all the soldiers to kill everybody uh, because, you know, he's basically uh, committed mutiny. This is all the Marines going to go. They're going to surround the ship when it lands on the platform because he's basically hijacked the ship. And then you get to the most important scene. I'm going to make sure I get this right. Okay, here we go. This is the most important scene. This is where all the uproar comes from. She approaches him with a gun and says, I'm going to kill you. You're going to, you're going to listen to me. You're going to listen to me. And he just, just ignores her first. I have to admit at this point, I actually thought this, there could be some redemption for this show. Like he's just going to tune her out or he's going to zap the gun or he's going to do something that would be cool. No, that's not at all. What yeah, happens. just shoot her. Well, not 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 not, her, not kill her, obviously, but like he would just zap. No, the no, gun just he like neutralize her. Hmm. Correct, right? He'd do something cool. No, his solution is because he says the gun won't even penetrate my armor. You can't kill me. So his solution is, spoiler alert for those of you at home. Oh no! It's 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 happening. It's happening right here before your eyes, folks. And here's the worst part. Um, as a creator. The shot, okay, first off, I don't know much about Master Chief, but Loki, wouldn't he have at least been scarred up, maybe head shaved, get a, get a good flesh wound or two in that head? Yep. I, would, I would have had some jacked up looking, even Boba Fett's head was pretty jacked up. And the process of turning them into Spartans, a third of the Spartans died. Oh, jeez. So a third of them, a third of them died becoming Spartans. So they lost a third of their group when they genetically modified them and basically made them like superhuman so they could get in the armor for in the first place because you can't just be in the armor. It'll kill you. No, nope. It'll kill nope. a normal human being. It would rip you apart. So they have to go through this training and then they have to go through genetic modification. That's what Halsey did to them. She genetically modified them and made them taller, stronger, faster, superhuman so they could fight in, in the coming war. Well, I can I can tell you that he'll no longer be a, a runway model now. He's just going to be Leaf Schreiber to me. He's Leaf Schreiber's little brother, and there he is. And she show he and then he basically just shoot me in the head. And of course, she doesn't do it because she's not really strong. She's just another weak little girl that, that's going to lecture him. I was gonna I was going to say as as a creator, if 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 you came to me with a script, Loki, and you said this is what we're going to do, and it's going to make people mad that we're going to take the helmet off, and I would be like, all right, listen, tell you what. He takes the helmet off. We shoot it from behind. We show his scarred head. We never show his face. She chooses not to shoot him. He puts the helmet back on. There'd still be outrage if he took the helmet off, but he didn't show the audience. And I think as bad as that would have been, it would have at least been somewhat better than this. It's just so lame that it basically mm. becomes – he basically becomes Boba Fett at this point. He's just going to take his helmet off and then just carry it around, I assume. 
Yep. Oh, and and Ryan, Ryan, spoiler alert: he never puts it back on. Mm. No. <laughs> Honestly, never again in the episode, right, Loki? Did they ever put it back on? Does I he? don't think he puts it back on. Yeah, I don't think he does. And, and well, they're all taking off the helmet. Well, taking off the helmet symbolizes them taking Halo and chucking it away. Yes, that's what it symbolizes. Good. Very good point, Ryan. Yeah, very good point. Uh, because this, they t- this, take these shows, they use them, and then they chuck them away. And then, it, it, then at this point, this last ten minutes or so is just a lesson in stupidity. Um, Master Chief tells her dismantle the AI, do all this stuff. She has no idea. How would she know? She lived on Tatooine, right? So how does she know how to deal with all this AI <laughs> nonsense? So her solution is just to shoot it. So she uses the gun and just shoots it. Here's them surrounding the ship. They're going to target. They're going to take him out. They've got missed messages from the different female leaders. So here she is. This is this is how you destroy AI in the ship. It, it doesn't affect anything else if you just start blasting the side of the ship. Um, anyway, hmm. helmets off. Nonsense. Nonsense. Then, uh, let's see. They're surrounding the ship. He t- So short version is he touches the relic. It basically is an EMP because we don't know why they never explain it i don't know it's just and none of that yeah. the the emp thing none of that happens in the halo video games there is no emp uh, emp weapon device that takes down human tech or anything like that in the forerunner arsenal so who knows I, it, it's just it's crap it's all crap the this mm. the whole first episode was crap um are you are you going to try to watch uh, Loki any more episodes? Or oh yeah, like oh, is yeah. it for me? Oh, so, so so we get to do this over again. We get to kind of like completely. Ryan, if I have I wrote you in, you're like I can't wait to see this. Honestly, no. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not even going to get I, Ryan back on the stream again. He's Ryan's like I don't even want to be a part of your stream. I just want to. Can we delete no, my no. association with Halo? This, this Halo thing is so <laughs> bad. <laughs> it's just another example of them taking something and killing it. I've seen it way too many times. Uh, I prefer to, you know, have a positive attitude. I see where the future is. It's in content creation. It's in live streaming. It's talking with social media personalities. There's a story to be told within each and every one of us. And what they're doing to our past, it there is a, a benefit to it. It enables us to build a better future on the past they are destroying. Well, and, and, and to share more onward, of the past with other yeah. people. And onwards it's, it's into an, the future. Hmm? It's another moment of this is ours now, not yours. Yeah. Hmm. What, um, and briefly, because I want to circle back to stuff I was rambling about earlier in the show, and I don't want to go over the time because I know there's a ton of other streams that people are starting about 7 o'clock uh, Eastern time. Um, so I want to stay uh, strict to my timeline. Other franchises you see that are next. Obviously, I threw all the stuff that we know about, like Amazon uh, with their Lord of the Rings nonsense. Obviously, there's no hope for Disney, Marvel, Disney, Star Wars anytime soon, in my opinion. I mean, there's a few things you're like, maybe it won't go as bad. But until, to me, I, I, I hold out hope only because money matters more. So this is all well and good until the finance is real. Everyone wants to have ESG. They all want to have their woke agenda. They want to have, but at some mm-hmm. point, you got to pay the rent. They got to, they got to keep shareholders happy. They got to make the money. So it may, it, it may take years. I've said this before on the shows. I've said, listen, mm-hmm. it can take three years, five years. I'm not going to give you some rainbows here, but what I, I, I briefly talked about the predator nonsense. I talked about mentioning Zorro briefly, some of this other stuff. Uh, I'll start with you, Loki. Is there a franchise you're like, God, they haven't gotten to this. Please, please, please don't let them see it. Please don't let them even get near this franchise. I hope they won't even notice it. I had a I had a discussion um, a little while back with a man named Joseph Malozzi. I don't know if you know who that is. I don't know who that is. He is one of the former showrunners for Stargate SG-1, Stargate Atlantis, Stargate SGU. Um, mm-hmm. I had a talk with him. He has a new script in his hands right now for a new Stargate show that he said will um, completely delight fans that have been there for years, new people that want to get into Stargate. He said this will make everyone happy. Um, I hope that Amazon does not get a hold of this because they've got MGM now. 
Um, right. I and completely twist it into something horrible. I love Stargate. It's one of the last remaining franchises that hasn't been completely screwed up by SJW sure. nonsense. And um, I do not want them to get a hold of that and destroy it. Ryan, you got something out there? You're like, oh, please, please, hopefully never ever notice this franchise. Well, there is one, but I, I don't know if it's already been infected already. And that is Red Dwarf. Oh, now, yeah, Red Dwarf has good, been good around. Choice, though. Yeah. It's been around for many years. It used to be on the BBC from 1989 until 1999. Then it went over to a British show called Dave. Now, Dave is... Uh, basically a comedy channel in the UK and it and Red Dwarf has been on that channel from about 2009 to about 2020 on and off but I think that could be something that they latch on to once all the other ma more major franchises are uh, destroyed and gutted as it were because I quite like that show yeah, that's a good one. That one I'm shocked is not already on somebody's radar screen. And maybe I'm overlooking it, but I haven't seen anything about that yet either. I, the one that I know has already been talked about a few times as far as being reboot remade, and that's Logan's Run. It seems like the Ugh. perfect thing for them to get their hooks into, but they haven't yet. There's been a lot of stuff, but that was pre pre Last Jedi, which I think is definitely the delineating sign. It definitely could be you know, floating around with all these mergers and stuff. You just never know where the stuff's landing on what desk. Um, but as I say, there's hope in the fact that finances matter. Listen, uh, listen, Loki, you have a massive list of shows that you do, that kind of thing. I know you have kind of a regular schedule of different shows. I can plug everything real quick. I have all stuff in the, in the, uh, down belows. Um, I don't have stuff from Ryan. Ryan, you have to somehow message me so I can get all of your socials and stuff too in there. I'll do the best I can with what I can track down, but that way I get people to link to all your stuff. So, Loki, talk about your different shows and what's going on. We do a morning show, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday. I hate time zones. Remember that? That's my <laughs> um, but we do a morning show every morning. Depends on what it is, what day it is. We've got we've got our Monday show. We've got Taco Tuesday. We have a YouTube talk Wednesdays that Ryan is going to be a part of tomorrow yep. morning. Awesome. Um, we have Thirsty Thursdays where the topic can be anything of the day and the weekend review on Friday. We usually talk about the craziness that's happened over the course of the week with the Rooster Day Bob. Um, that is the main lineup for what we do each and every week. And we've never missed a weekday ever. Congratulations. That's awesome, man. That's a great, uh, great resume to build upon. Ryan, how are you doing? What is, what's the uh, top of your line for your content? Well, I make videos on YouTube, Ryan Roger Athe. I talk about topics and people that I'm interested in. Most of my videos are either my thoughts, suggestion videos, and rising star videos of which Stone Loki is one, and you, Pops, will be most likely one in the uh, future. I see you going far as a content creator onwards into the future. But I release yeah. videos daily. I try to release videos daily. Um, you can find me on YouTube and Twitter and Instagram at Ryan Roger Athe. Oh, man, that's awesome. So, oh, Loki, you sent me a link to this thing a while ago in the private chat. I'm still not used to bouncing around. It's again, we're back to my uh, boomer nature there. Uh, well, listen, guys, it's been so awesome. It's been great to uh, sort of break down the Halo nonsense a little bit more for some folks. Save Ryan from having to even track it down on his own he can get a little crash course uh, the cliff notes if you will of some of this nonsense and then we could tack uh you know tack on a few other things and uh, chat it up so gentlemen i appreciate everything i'll make sure i have everything in the descriptions usually what i do is uh, and folks if you want a little synopsis if you're new, new to pops uh, i usually do try to do a stream or a long form video some folks don't like the live because they're not necessarily uh, I don't know, professional semi-professional but we'll record and do that then i make clips and again, I go back to my radio days and a little bit of clickbaitiness and thumbnails and stuff. because that's It's fun for me. I got to be honest. I do it for what I think is is entertaining and fun. Sometimes the clips will be four, five, six minutes long. Sometimes they're 20 minutes long. This Halo one's going to be this massive long video. And of course, you know, when Loki said it, this is nothing but fan fiction. There's your thumbnail just writing itself because it is absolutely 100% true. And that could be applied to everything. It's like we have this, we could just, we could have just had this, uh, I basically called it Mandalorian because you had just a, this blank script and then just didn't know what it was. Oh, we could put Halo on that. And we just changed a couple things and whatever. And 
I feel that's what happened. I feel like it just went to some high school 10th grader who turned it into his Halo script. And that's pretty much what we got. It's just that generic. It could be substituted for anything else. And I got to be honest, I could probably adapt that in a couple of days for Stargate and Red Dwarf. It wouldn't take me that long to probably come up with some sort of script modification mm -hmm. and I could rewrite it. They're just that generic and vanilla. There's nothing interesting happening. And is it, is it, is it schadenfreude? Is that how you say it? The German term for like, almost like hate watching. That's a, that's kind of how it's going to be for me. <laughs> it's just like, I'm watching it just because it's like, I, I can't look away at the car accident. I'm guilty as charged. I can't help it. And Loki, you made it worse. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag blame Loki. <laughs> blame Loki. Hashtag blame Loki. So general.